So welcome to another crew mode video. Today we're talking about the things you may not know about in this game mode. Obviously if you play crew mode hardcore, you might know all the things I'm going to talk about today, but we're going to be talking about different tips, settings, and other little things that you might not know about. This is going to be part one, and even though it's late in the cycle to put out a video like this, I hope you do learn something new today. If you want to use the best players and dominate foot, you're going to need a lot of coins. Check out today's sponsor, MuleFactory.com, who offer foot coins with comfort trade. Use my link in the description and my code VAPEXFC5 for 5% off. So the fans in FIFA crew mode do leave the games early. This started in FIFA 22. We've seen it in real life. Fans get up and go when a team's getting pumped or if the game is pretty much done. And this does happen in FIFA. Take a look at this clip that I made earlier on in the game cycle. This is like a hidden feature in FC 24 and it's pretty cool. Basically when you start smashing a team past the six goal mark, you start seeing attendance in the stadium drop a lot. So in this example, we've got Brighton, and it looks really nice in this stadium as well. So we're Man City, we're smashing Brighton, and it's already 3-0. You can see the fans are still there. They're staying loyal. It's the 24th minute now, 4-0, and then we go up to 5-0. They're still there. They're hanging around, even though it's starting to fall apart for Brighton. After the sixth goal, you can see the fans start dropping. At least half the attendance has already gone home. They're not even going to watch the second half here. It's now 9-0, and you can see that there's still some people sticking around. There's about half an hour left. We go up to 10-0, I believe now. They're still around. I think every five or six goals, the attendance keeps dropping. But you can see here, 11-0 now. They're still around. And then we go to 12-0. And uh, I think there's a few more empty seats now. And then as we go into the last minute or two of the game, you can see that there's a lot of empty seats now. It looks pretty cool, though. I do like this kind of feature. It's realistic as well. A lot of fans would not be around if the game was 12-0. It works with other stadiums as well, like Brentford, I believe. From the start to the end, you do see a lot more empty seats. But yeah, you're only going to really notice this feature if you're smashing a team by six goals in career mode. You're not really going to notice it if it's 1-0 or 2-0, a very close game. So just keep that in mind as well. I tried it with Spurs as well, and you can see in injury time, it was 8-0 to Liverpool, and there was a lot of empty seats. The fans really started leaving in injury time, though. They were there for most of the game. So for some stadiums, it's going to be more noticeable, like the Brighton one. In other stadiums, it's not going to be as noticeable, but it's still there as you play the game. But you really have to smash teams before you notice this feature. If you pre-ordered FC24, you need to know about this career mode pre-order bonus. In manager career mode this year, you do get a five-star coach available for hire. Obviously, that's going to be a great coach to put into your squad when you first start out. Last year, manager career mode, there actually was a pre-order bonus, and it was called the homegrown talent. It was a local youth prospect with world-class potential. I still would have liked a homegrown talent in the pre-order bonus section as well, but they got rid of that. I thought the homegrown talent would have been pretty useful for a lot of people. After you select your tactical vision, you'll get the coaches section, and this is where you'll see the five-star coach. As you can see, it's very easy to spot. They have five stars for attacking, midfield, defense, and also goalkeeper. So you can essentially put this guy in any department, and he's going to be a five-star coach. Obviously, the salary is going to be pretty high, but it's going to be one of the best coaches to put when you start out in career mode. If you're using any other account, like a secondary account or third account, you won't see this pre-order bonus. It's only registered to the main account that you use. And obviously, if you didn't pre-order the game, then it's likely that you're not going to get this five-star coach. There was also another career mode pre-order bonus, and that was for player career mode. According to EA, you would have got additional player personality points in player career mode. I didn't play enough of player career mode this year to actually know if this is it, but I did check the activity section, and I think this is the boost. So it says personality boost, boost your preferred personality type, and basically it's just a thing you can redeem, and you can boost your virtuoso points, you can do maverick points, and also the heartbeat points. You've got 10 days in-game to decide, and obviously you just pick whichever one you think is going to be best for your player. Let's say we go with the Maverick. It says activity completed. Even if you pick the Maverick as the main one, it does give you points to the other two as well. And now when we check our player personality, you can see that the boost has already helped our player on day one of the save. So you just can start allocating play style straight away if you pre-ordered the game and got this boost. Next up, we're going to talk about the longest contract in manager career mode. So if you go to SaveFIFA.com, you can filter out by contract length. And that's what I did here. You can see that some Chelsea players are amongst the list of players that have contracts running all the way up to 2031, sometimes even 2032. We've got players like Fernandez, Sanchez, Caicedo, Jackson, Monchiola, Mudrick, and Vitor Rock. These are the longest running contracts in the game, but I'm going to try and make it even longer now. Let's try and extend one. So if you're managing Chelsea in crew mode, obviously you're going to be pretty blessed because a lot of these player contracts have seven years, eight years, nine years, five years. The longest contract at the moment is nine years for Enzo Fernandez. Let's try and extend this. We're going to go into a contract negotiation and see if we can get it over 10, 11 years. I guess Fernandez's agent is such a good agent because he's got this guy a long-term deal. This is pretty much a set for your career contract. 
nine years already. You're not going anywhere. You're getting paid for the next decade, I guess. We're going to make him a crucial player. And the agent says that's what we had in mind. They want no contract extension, but we're going to sort of counter that. We're going to add another five years. Let's see if they want that. No, they don't. Maybe three years. Let's see what they say there. They still say no extension. Let's go to two years. They still say no extension. I'm literally giving you free money. Let's go down to one year now. And apparently they're fine with that length. So you can extend the contracts even if they're long. Usually you'll get an extra year. No release clause. And there you go. So it's pretty much done. Now we've got a 10 year deal. When you go back into the squad hub now, you can see that the contract did get extended to 10 years. You might be able to get it over 10 years with maybe another player, but still a 10 year contract in career mode is pretty long. So in career mode, some competitions have different rules when it comes to table rankings. So if we use the Premier League, for example, pay attention to like Manchester United there in seventh. They've got 36 points. You've got Everton above them, which is ranked higher than them because they have a better goal difference. They've got eight goals. Manchester United has seven goal difference. Southampton underneath that is also on 36 points, but they're lower than United because they've got a five goal difference. So basically the Premier League works by points. If they're level on points, then the next step is the goal difference. Now, if the teams end up on identical points and also identical goal difference, the rules say that goal scored will act as the next tiebreaker. If that doesn't help, number three is head-to-head -head results between the two teams. If that doesn't help, it's head-to-head -head away goals between those two teams in those fixtures. And if all else fails, number five is the playoff, and that would be played at a neutral venue you as well. Out of all these FIFA games over the last couple of decades, I've never seen a playoff final to decide the Premier League. I would love to know if it's actually programmed into the game. It would be amazing to see. There are different competition rules for the Champions League. Some people tell me that they've uh, missed out on the round of 16 for the Champions League because they got knocked out when they probably shouldn't have. They finished on the same points and even had a higher goal difference, but it doesn't work like that in the Champions League like it would have in the Premier League. Take a look at Group C here. We've got Dortmund on nine points with a zero goal difference and Sporting underneath that with nine points and a two goal difference. So Sporting should be higher than Dortmund, but because the Champions League has different rules, Dortmund actually finishes higher. I remember people telling me that they should have finished in first spot because of their goal difference and stuff. They had a higher goal difference, but the game put them in second. They thought it was some sort of bug and stuff, but it's not. Here's how the rules work for the Champions League. So if two or more teams are equal on points after the group matches are completed, the following criteria is applied. A is the higher number of points obtained in the group matches played among the teams in question. B is the superior goal difference from the group matches played among the teams in question. C is the higher number of goals scored in the group matches played among the teams in question. D says that if A to C doesn't work, then it gets reapplied exclusively to the matches between the remaining teams to determine their rankings. If that doesn't work, then E is superior goal difference in all group matches. F is higher number of goals scored in all matches. G is higher number of away goals scored in all matches. H is higher number of wins in all matches. I is higher number of away wins. And J is lower disciplinary points. And if all else fails, K comes comes down to the higher club coefficient. Next time you think that you should have been going through or you shouldn't have gotten relegated, you should have came first or something, keep in mind that different leagues have different ways to rank teams that are level on points. The La Liga also works a little bit different to the Premier League and from what I've seen, EA does try and apply these different table rules in career mode as well. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe and click the thumbnail in the middle to watch new FC25 news.